Hello friends, welcome to this session from TNV Academy. Today in this session, we are going to discuss about the various risk assessment methodologies. In this session, we will talk about risk assessment methodologies. In respect to ISO 27000 Information Security Management System. So let's begin our discussion. An organization's sensitive information is under constant threat. Identifying those security risk is critical to protecting that information. But some risks are bigger than others. Some mitigation options are more expensive than others. Adopting a formal risk assessment process gives you the information you need to set priorities. There are many ways to perform a risk assessment, each with its own benefits and drawbacks. Risk assessment is the way organizations decide what to do in the face of today's complex security landscape. Threats and vulnerabilities are everywhere. They could come from an external actor or a careless user. They may even be built into the network infrastructure. Decision makers need to understand the urgency of the organization's risk as well as how much mitigation efforts will cost. Risk assessments help set these priorities. They evaluate the potential impact and probability of each risk. Decision makers can then evaluate which mitigation efforts to prioritize within the context of the organization's strategy, budget and timelines. So let's discuss the various methodologies of risk assessment. The first one is quantitative. Quantitative methods bring analytical rigor to the process. Assets and risk receive dollar values. The resulting risk assessment can then be presented in financial terms that executes and board members easily understand. Cost-benefit analysis let decision makers prioritize mitigation options. However, quantitative methodology may not be appropriate. Some assets or risks are not easily quantifiable. Forcing them into this numerical approach requires judgment calls, undermining an assessment's objectivity. Communicating the results beyond the boardroom can be difficult. In addition, some organizations do not have the internal expertise that quantitative risk assessments require. Organizations often take on the added cost to bring in consultants' technical and financial skills. The second one is qualitative, where quantitative methods take a scientific approach to risk assessment. Qualitative methods take a more generalistic approach. Assessors meet with people throughout the organization. Employees share how or whether. They would get their jobs done should a system go offline. Assessors use this input to categorize risk on rough scales such as high, medium or low. A qualitative risk assessment provides a general picture of how risk affect an organization's operations. People across the organization are more likely to understand qualitative risk assessments. On the other hand, these approaches are inherently subjective. The assessment team must develop easily explained scenarios, develop questions and interviews methodologies that avoid bias and then interpret the results. Without a solid financial foundation for cost-benefit analysis, mitigation options can be difficult to prioritize. The third one is semi-quantitative. Some organizations will combine the previous methodologies to create semi-quantitative risk assessments. Using this approach, organizations will use a numerical scale such as 1 to 10 or 1 to 100 to assign a numerical risk value. Risk items that score in the lower third are grouped as low risk, the middle third as a medium risk and the higher third as a high risk. Blending quantitative and qualitative methodologies avoids the intense probability and asset value calculations of the former while producing more analytical assessments than the latter. Semi-quantitative methodologies can be more objective and provide a sound basis for prioritizing risk items. The fourth one is asset-based. 
Traditionally, organizations take an asset-based approach to assessing IT risk. Assets are composed of the hardware, software, and networks that handle an organization's information plus the information itself. An asset-based assessment generally follows a four-step process. Inventory all assets. Evaluate the effectiveness of existing controls. Identify the threats and vulnerabilities of each asset. Assess each risk potential impact. Asset-based approaches are popular because they align with an IT department's structures, operations, and culture. A firewalls, risk, and controls are easy to understand. However, asset-based approaches cannot produce complete risk assessments. Some risks are not part of the information infrastructure. Policies, processes, and other soft factors can expose the organizations to as much danger as an the fifth one is vulnerability-based. Vulnerability-based methodologies expand the scope of the risk assessment beyond an organization's assets. This process starts with an examination of the known weaknesses and deficiencies within organizational systems or the environments those systems operate within. From there, assessors identify the possible threats that could exploit these vulnerabilities along with the exploit's potential consequences. Trying vulnerability-based risk assessments with an organization's vulnerabilities management process demonstrates effective risk management and vulnerability management processes. Although this approach captures more of the risk than a purely asset-based assessment, it is based on known vulnerabilities and may not capture the full range of threats and organization faces. The sixth one is thread-based. Thread-based methods can supply a more complete assessment of an organization's overall risk posture. This approach evaluates the conditions that create risk. An asset audit will be part of the assessment since assets and their controls contribute to these conditions. Thread-based approaches look beyond the physical infrastructure. By evaluating the techniques threat actor use, for example, assessments may reprioritize mitigation options. Cybersecurity training mitigates social engineering attacks. An asset-based assessment may prioritize systematic controls or employee training. A threat-based assessment, on the other hand, may find that increasing the frequency of cybersecurity training reduces risk at a lower cost. How to choose the right methodology? None of these methodologies are perfect. Each has strengths and weaknesses. Fortunately, none of them are mutually exclusive. Whether intentionally or by circumstance, organizations often perform risk assessment that combine these approaches. When designing your risk assessment process, the methodologies you use will depend on what you need to achieve and the nature of your organization. If board level and executive approvals are the most important criteria, then your approach will lean towards quantitative methods. More qualitative approaches might be better if you need support from employees and other stakeholders. Asset-based assessments align naturally with your IT organization while thread-based assessments addresses to the complex cybersecurity landscape. Constantly assessing your organization's risk exposure is the only way to protect sensitive information from today's cyber threats. So we have now come to the conclusion of this session. There might be some questions or queries on what we have discussed today. So please feel free to drop them in the comment section of the video. We will be really happy answering them. Till we meet next, it's best wishes from TNV Academy. Thank you.